Calling this meeting of the Providence City Council to order Thursday, October 4th, 2018. Madam Clerk, can you read the roll call, please? Council President Salvatore. Present. Councilman Aponte. Here. Councilwoman Castillo. Here. Councilman Crea. Councilwoman Harris. Councilwoman Harris is absent. Councilman Hassett. Councilman Igliozzi. Present. Councilman Jennings. Present. Councilwoman LaFortune. Present. Councilwoman Matos. Present. Councilman Narducci. Here. Councilman Principe. Present. Councilwoman Ryan. Present. Councilman Yurden. Councilman Zurier. You have 14 ayes and one absent. You have a quorum. Thank you, Madam Clerk. The invocation will be given by Councilman Luis Aponte. Thank you, Mr. President. If we all bow our heads, Almighty God, we thank you for the blessings of our lives. We give you praise for the abundance of mercy and grace that we receive every day. Thank you for your faithfulness even when we are not faithful to you. Lord, we ask that you give us peace of mind, body, soul, and spirit, that you heal and remove everything that is causing stress, grief, and sorrow in our lives so that peace may reign in our city. We ask these things in your name. Amen. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by Councilwoman Sabina Matos. Minutes, item three, Journal of Proceedings number 27 of the regular meeting of the City Council held September 20, 2018. Leader Rigliozzi. Uh, move to approve. Second that motion, Mr. President. Leader Rigliozzi moves approval of item number three. That's seconded by Whip Ryan. Is there discussion? All those in favor? All of those opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries. Ordinances second reading. The Leader Rigliozzi. Mr. President, motion to dispense the readings of item four through six and to pass on a second time in a roll call vote. Second that motion. Leader Igliozzi moves to dispense with the readings of items four through six and to pass all matters for the second time on a roll call vote. That's seconded by Whip Ryan. Is there discussion? Madam Clerk, the roll call, please. Council President Salvatore. Aye. Councilman Aponte. Aye. Councilwoman Castillo. Aye. Councilman Correa. Aye. Councilwoman Harris is absent. Councilman Hassett. Aye. Councilman Igliozzi. Aye. Councilman Jennings. Aye. Councilwoman LaFortune. So noted. Councilwoman Matos. So noted. Councilman Narducci. Aye. Councilman Principe. No, yes, Councilwoman Ryan. Aye. Councilman Yurden. Aye. Councilman Zurier. Aye. You have 14 ayes and one absent. And on item number five, you have two no's and one not voting. The motion carries the matters passed for the second time. Presentation of ordinances. Mr. Council President. Leader Rigliotti. Motion to dispense the reading of item number seven and to refer it to the appropriate committee. Second that motion, Mr. President. Leader Rigliotti moves to dispense with the reading of item number seven. That's seconded by Whip Ryan. Is there discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed, refer to the committee on ARP. Councilwoman Matos, Mr. President. Eight Leader Igliotis. Motion to dispense the reading of 8 through 10 and to refer to the appropriate committee. Second that motion, Mr. President. Leader Igliotis moves to dispense with the readings of items 8 through 10. That's seconded by Whip Ryan. Is there discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Refer to the committee on finance. Council President Salvatore, item Mr. 11. Mr. President, on item number 11, I'm going to respectfully request the clerk read the entire resolution into the record. Second and that motion. No no objection, I would like to co-sponsor to. Same request. Call council co-sponsoring item number 11. So noted. Leader Igliozzi, is that a motion to approve item number 11 as well? Yes, Mr. President. Second that motion, Mr. President. That's seconded by Whip Ryan. Madam Clerk, can you read the resolution for the record, please? The resolution recognizing and remembering the life and legacy of John Michael D'Antoine. Whereas John Michael D'Antuano was a longtime resident of Rhode Island, and whereas after graduating LaSalle Academy, he attended Bryant University, where he received his Bachelor of Science degree, and whereas additionally he was a certified public accountant and a member of the CPA Society, and whereas he led a life committed to public service, starting as a page for the Rhode Island State House and followed by an almost 30-year-long career within city government. 
and where his most recently held, he held dual titles of business manager for the Providence School Department and city controller for the city of Providence. And whereas throughout, through his time as a city employee, Michael received numerous accolades. In August 2018, he was presented with the key to the city by the mayor's office. And whereas he was admired and respected by all who knew him, particularly for his integrity and consistent professionalism. And whereas he was an avid and loyal Patriots fan and took great joy in attending all of his son's Pop Warner football games. And whereas John Michael D'Antuano passed away at the age of 53 on Tuesday, September 18, 2018, surrounded by his loving family. And whereas he is survived by his wife, Charlotte D'Antuano, his parents, John R. and Elaine D'Antuano, and his loving children, Felicia and Jonathan. And whereas he is also survived by his brother, Glenn D'Antuano, and his wife, Robin, his uncle, David D'Antuano, and Aunt Emma, his niece, Lindsay, and her husband, Nicholas, and nephews, Jake and Sumner, as well as his many cousins whom he loved dearly. And now, therefore, be it resolved that the City Council of the City of Providence does hereby recognize and remember the life and legacy of John Michael D'Antoine. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Just a discussion. Leader Wrigley, up Mr. President, I just I have to stand up on this matter. Just um, first of all, I want to give my deepest condolences to the D'Antoine family. Um, actually, I, I know Michael a long time. Uh, Michael and I actually graduated high school together. We both also were pages in the State House together, and I've known him. And he had a nickname back then. It was not used to be on his LaSalle jacket, but I won't say it because when I would say it to him quietly, he would say, John, stop calling me the nickname. It wasn't a bad nickname. It was, it was a nice nickname. And he was a really, uh, uh, really nice guy dedicated to the city of Providence. And he uh, understood city's finances and the school department. And, uh, you know, he just was a wonderful guy. He used to give him a little hard time in the finance committee, but he knew it because I've known him all my life. And uh, that's how our relationship was, and he will be missed. Uh, I know the school department should be missing him. I know the city should miss him, and I want to let him once again say on behalf of my constituents and my family and personally, it is a great loss, and my condolences to their family. Thank you, Leader Wrigley Oates. Additional discussion? All those in favor? All those opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries. Item 12, resolution urging the Rhode Island... Leader Wrigley Oates. Mr. President, motion to dispense the reading item 12 through 22 and to pass on a voice vote. I'll second that motion, Mr. President. Leader Igliotsu moves to dispense with the readings of items 12 through 22 and pass all items on a voice vote. That's seconded by Whip Ryan. Is there discussion? Mr. President. Uh, Councilwoman LaFortune. I'd like to co-sponsor um, the resolution. Um, for um, on item 12, considering everything that's happened within our community in these past few weeks, it's important for our, our young people and just people in general to understand um, how to appropriately engage with one another and resolve any conflict that will arise without using um, violence or force. Thank you, Councilwoman. Councilman Yarden. Uh, thank, uh, thank you, Council President. President. I'm rising with, with regard to item number, number 15, this is a resolution supporting support for the green economy and clean water bond uh, that will be state ballot question number three coming up in the general election. Uh, this is a very important bond for the state, but also for Providence. Uh, almost $8 million will be um, available to unlock $40 million in federal funding and up to $200 million in private capital for water treatment, upgrades, stormwater quality improvement, and the like. Uh, there's a host of other things that are going to be funded by this, um, including bikeways, local recreation, and um, open space. But one thing that's very important to Providence is funding to address uh, the issue of dredging of Providence's rivers. Um, we have issues in downtown Providence. Our water place park to Point Street Bridge are impassable to boat traffic 50% of the time. So this will unlock funding in order to uh, do what is, uh, has to be done every, every so often uh, to preserve that. And it's really a necessary part of the, the city supporting water fire um, as well as just generally what the, the feel of our city is. So I urge my colleagues to support this and urge the voters as well to vote yes on uh, the uh, bond question number three. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Yordan. Madam Clerk, if there's no objection from the lead sponsor of item 15, I'd like to be noted as a co-sponsor. So noted. Councilwoman Lara Fortune, Leader Rigliozzi. Mr. Councilwoman Ryan, Councilwoman Castillo, the whole council. Council President. 
So noted. Full council on number 15. If there's no objection from the sponsor of general item number 14, I'd like to be listed as a co-sponsor, recognizing the month of October as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Likewise, the whole council? Yes, Mr. President. So noted. Deputy Leader Narducci. Thank you, Council President. If I may just uh, briefly, um, I just think it's very important to keep those in mind and in our prayers, their families that have uh, had somebody in their family um, suffer with breast cancer or even make a comeback from breast cancer. My dad, 17 years ago, um, had breast cancer for five years and um, didn't make it. And everybody, you know, back 17 years ago, it was like a million and one shot for a man to get breast cancer. Um, I just think it's a very important thing to remember. Um, you know, again, like I've said before on other things, you know, you take things for granted so many different times. Um, but uh, again, just uh, thank you to the full council for your support on on Thank you, Deputy Leader Narducci. Councilman Aponte? Did you? All set? Okay. Additional discussion? All of those in favor? All of those opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries. Committee on Finance, Councilman John J. Igliuzzi, Chairman, transmits the following with recommendation this Leader evening. Leader Igliuzzi. Motion to dispense the reading of item 23 to 24 and to pass on the first time a roll call vote. Second that motion, Mr. President. Leader Igliotti moves to dispense with the readings of items 23 and 24 and pass both items for the first time in a roll call vote. That's seconded by Whip Ryan. Is there discussion? Leader Igliotti. No discussion? No, All those in favor? Oh, Madam Clerk, the roll call, please. Council President Salvatore. Aye. Councilman Aponte. Aye. Councilwoman Castillo. Aye. Councilman Crea. Aye. Councilwoman Harris is absent. Councilman Hassett. Aye. Councilman Igliozzi. Aye. Councilman Jennings. Aye. Councilwoman LaFortune. Aye. Councilwoman Matos. Aye. Councilman Narducci. Aye. Councilman Principe. Aye. Councilwoman Ryan. Aye. Councilman Yurden. Councilman Zurier. You have 14 ayes and one absent. The motion carries. The matter's passed for the first time. Council President. Deputy Leader Narducci. Point of personal expression. Proceed. I think it's very important to share it again, only because I know a lot of you were praying for her and still praying for her. Um, last week we had a great miracle, um, my seven-year-old niece, the one that got hit by the drunk driver down in Warwick that uh, at one point was in a coma for two and a half months. We didn't even know if that poor baby was going to make it. At one point they were talking about amputating her left leg from the knee down, amputating the right leg from the ankle throughout the foot. Well, throughout numerous surgeries, she started therapy. Last Saturday, I seen my niece take three steps on her own, without a walker, without nothing, seven years old. Again, the therapists are like, they're amazed, they're saying that this baby shouldn't even be putting pressure on this leg at this point in time. I shared with some of you the video, the smile, that this baby is so happy. Her little sister, said what a bad man the man was that hit her. And she said, no, he's not a bad man. He just made a mistake, seven years old. She says to me, Uncle Nick, wait, wait, that's not it. Hang on, hang on. So I'm standing there, she gets her crutches, and she took about eight steps with her crutches. So I really, I just wanted to mention that because again, I know a lot of you were praying and asking for her, and I really appreciate, my family appreciates the prayers and the thoughts and, and the concern of everybody. And again, she's just, um, she's one of a kind. She's, uh, they, they call her Haley Spirit in school. She's back to school full time. Um, so, so she's dealing with that too now. The matter of a month and a half is, is so, so incredible. We stand here and we pray to God before our meetings about all different certain things. But you know what? When you see something like Haley and you see what, what she went through and the way she is now, that's when you really know God is up there doing his job for everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy, Deputy Leader Narducci. Uh, you shared that video with me, and after watching it, certainly puts everything in perspective 
And seeing the smile on that young girl's face certainly brought a smile to my face. I, sh I shared that uh, with my family, and they're, they continue to pray for Haley and Melina. And we continue to pray for you and your family council. So thank you for sharing that. Special Committee on School Department Oversight. Peter Agliotti. Mr. President, motion to dispense the reading of item number 25 and pass in a voice vote and refer back to the Board of Contract and Supply. Second the motion, Mr. President. Leader Agliotti moves to dispense with the reading of item number 25. That's seconded by Whip Ryan. Is there discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The matter passes on a voice vote and refers back to the Board of Contract and Supply. From the clerk's desk, petitions for compensation for injuries and damages. Mr. President? Leader Igliotti. Motion to refer to the uh, Committee on Claims and Pending Suits. Second that motion, Mr. President. Leader Igliotti moves to severally refer the item number 26 back to the Committee on Claims and Pending Suits. That's seconded by Whip Ryan. Is there discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries. Communications and reports. Mr. President? Leader Igliotti. Motion to dispense the reading of item number 27 and to receive. Second that motion, Mr. President. Leader Igliotti moves to dispense with the reading of item number 22nd. 27. That's seconded by Whip Ryan. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Received. Presentation Mr. President. Leader Igliotti. I'd like to speak on personal expression. Proceed. Thank you. Um, it would be remiss upon me not to discuss something that I think is paramount for all of us. Um, unfortunately, uh, the city is in a crisis right now. And I, we all can't turn a blind eye to that. Um, I remember about, I don't know how many years, a decade ago, I remember, and it was a similar situation, and a council, councilman sat right in that, right there. His name was Councilman Miguel Luna. And there was a strike, by the way. Uh, what do you call it? First student strike. And he rallied all of us in the council to go down there and to, uh, to support the strikers and the working folks down there. And um, it's kind of funny, it's like we're back here again. And I just want to remind people, by the way, in spirit of Councilman Luna, a couple of things. Um, there were about approximately 200 bus drivers. Majority are women, minorities. They make a simple pay, it's a part-time job. They work about six hours a day. That's what it's about. The dispute that's before us right now isn't about wages, it's not about benefits. It's about them wanting to have a, some kind of pension later on when they retire. By the way, nothing extravagant, folks, here. And just to let you get a sense, I, I have taken the liberty of speaking to some folks and stakeholders and try to get an understanding of what's going on. And this is what was relayed to me. Presently right now, that female bus driver who drives our kids safely back and forth to school Right? Gets a, a basic wage and they get out this 401k. Right? And it's about, at the end of the day, out of a $35 million contract with the city and first student, first student pays about $65,000 to 200 bus drivers' 401ks. About half of that, by the way, excuse me, half of that comes from the actual bus driver. So, what they're all asking is this, by the way. They're asking for one dollar to be added per hour to be contributed to the pension system. That comes out to six dollars a day times approximately 181, which comes out to approximately about a thousand dollars in change a year per bus driver, which comes out to about two hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. Well, it sounds like a lot of money, it's not. The city's contract is thirty-five million dollars. Think about this for a second. We're arguing about a dollar. We're arguing about contributing to a pension system. We're arguing about, by the way, folks that take care of the most vulnerable, the most precious cargo that we all care about. And the fact that the city, unfortunately, I don't know what happened, negotiated whatever contract position out, gives me concern. But we need to stand up and support and protect our children. And by the way, and help us support those bus drivers, just like we supported the assistants on that bus that take care and transport our kids. The fact, the fact that our handicapped children can't get to school is a travesty. 
the fact that they can't get there and get educated and have an opportunity to succeed, we failed. Folks, let's put it all together. We have a no teacher's contract. We have a superintendent who has 10 months left on his contract. We have the Department of Justice who's investigated the school department and is penalizing us. We have violence in our schools. We have a tragedy on the first week of school. And now we can't even get our kids to school. I don't know what's going on here, but this is a problem. We should do everything we can to try to solve this problem. And if it's about $200,000, if it's about that nominal cost, well, about 10 some odd years ago, the city solved the problem then. What we did was we came back, we renegotiated the contract, and we helped the contract to pay those workers a fair wage. If the city has to go back and help on this contract, 200,000, in this case, by the way, be less than that because they're already paying 65. We're talking about $150,000. Folks, that's a playground. I'm just saying that we need to step up, we need to protect our children, but we also need to support the idea of a fair wage and, and giving these uh, people an opportunity to have a, a decent living. And especially since, in my mind, they're single moms, mothers, and they live in the city, majority live in the city. So I just ask everybody if they could support this initiative, push, prod, and let's solve this problem. Because this is the capital city, and there's no excuse for next week that our kids can't get to school. Thank you. Councilman Surrier. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, we uh, had a meeting of the School Department Oversight Committee on Monday. And we learned some information about uh, the circumstances of the strike. What we learned is that the issue is that the National Teamsters Union wants for a student to make a contribution into the National Pension Fund. And uh, for a first student wants to uh, support the pensions of the teachers outside the National Fund. The reason being that the National Fund is only 55% funded, and if first student becomes a contributor to it, it's a multi-employer pension fund, and it's subject to the uh, Pension Be Benefit Guarantee Corporation regulations, and suddenly first student may be on the hook for much more than what they bargained for. Um, so uh, I, uh, you know, I, I know that the bus drivers have some perspective on it. Our first student has some perspective on it. And the real problem is that we are, uh, have a contractual relationship with a sole source provider. Uh, the school department has tried for several years to get this out to bid to other providers. They haven't figured out how to do it, and they have to figure out how to do it because first student is, is a problem. They're not providing services to our kids. They have a contract which specifically carves out liability for this problem, and it's not because the city didn't see it coming. It's because first student was able to negotiate that out because we didn't have any choice. What we also heard was that um, parents are working very hard to send their kids to school, notwithstanding the strike. Uh, there's a lot of resilience there. Um, it's certainly not something that's fair to ask of the parents. Uh, the parents are organizing. I'm going to be meeting with parents to talk about that in the teacher strike. But I think we'd be remiss not to give credit to the school department and the parents for what they're doing in the wake of this external problem. Um, with regard to the investigation by the Department of Justice, uh, this is an issue that the school department has been advocating for for many years, English language learner instruction. The problem is that the Rhode Island State Aid to Education funding formula is one of only a very few in the country that doesn't have an extra funding stream for English language learners. Um, and frankly, uh, I think that the General Assembly should be ashamed of themselves. Uh, it was the result of a political bargain um, with a, so a senator from a wealthy community when the funding formula was enacted in 2010. In short, uh, there are major challenges in the school department, but I think we make a mistake when we try to blame people inside exclusively for what is a, very, what is, uh, a large set of external factors. 
Instead, I think we should encourage them to do the best they can in a difficult situation. Madam Clerk, please proceed with the presentation matters on the uh, docket. Presentation of resolutions and congratulations, Council President Salvatore and members of the City Council. Item 28, resolution extending congratulations. Leader Igliotzi. Mr. President, motion, motion to pass on a voice vote. Second that motion. Leader Igliotzi moves to pass item number 28 on a voice vote. That's seconded by Whip Ryan. Is there discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries. Presentation of resolutions in memoriam, Council President Salvatore and members of the City Council. Item 29, resolution extending sympathy. Leader Igliotzi. Mr. President, motion to pass on a unanimous rising vote. Second that motion. Mr. Leader Igliotzi moves to pass item number 29 on a unanimous rising vote. That's seconded by Whip Ryan. Mr. President. Leader Igliotzi. If there's no more business before this honorable body, I make a motion to adjourn. Leader Igliotzi moves to adjourn. That's second by Whip Ryan. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? This meeting is adjourned. Folks, don't go anywhere. We have a special meeting upon the rise. Thursday, October 4th, 2018. Madam Clerk, can you read the roll call, please? Council President Salvatore. Present. Councilman Aponte. Councilwoman Castillo. Councilman Correa. Present. Councilwoman Harris is absent. Councilman Hassett. Councilman Hassett is absent. Councilman Igliozzi. Aye. Councilman Jennings. Aye. Councilwoman LaFortune. Aye. Councilwoman Matos. Present. Councilman Narducci. Here. Councilman Principe. Present. Councilwoman Ryan. Present. Councilman Yurden is absent. Councilman Zurier. You have 12 present and three absent. You have a quorum. Mr. President. Leader Igliozzi. Motion to waive the invocation and the Pledge of Allegiance. Leader Igliozzi moves to waive the invocation of the Pledge of Allegiance. That's second by Whip Ryan. All those in favor? All those opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries. Call for special Mr. President. Leader Igliozzi. Motion to waive the readings of item one and two and to receive. Second that motion. Mr. Leader Igliozzi moves to dispense with the readings of items one and two. That's second by Whip Ryan. Is there discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Received. Reports from committees, committee Mr. on ordinances. President, Leader Igliotzi. Motion to dispense the reading of item number three and to pass on a first time a roll call vote. Second that motion. Leader Igliotzi moves to dispense with the reading of item number three and pass for the first time on a roll call vote. That's seconded by Whip Ryan. Is there discussion? Madam Clerk, can you read the roll call, please? Council President Salvatore. Aye. Councilman Aponte. Aye. Councilwoman Castillo. Aye. Councilman Correa. Aye. Councilwoman Harris is absent. Councilman Hassett is absent. Councilman Igliozzi. Aye. Councilman Jennings. Aye. Councilwoman LaFortune. Aye. Councilwoman Matos. Aye. Councilman Narducci. Aye. Councilman Principe. Aye. Councilwoman Ryan. Aye. Councilman Yurden is absent. Councilman Zurier. You have 12 ayes and three absent. The motion carries. The matter passes for the first time. Special Committee on School Department. Leader Igliozzi. Mr. President, motion to waive the, uh, dispense with the reading of item number four and to pass on a voice vote and refer back to the Board of Contract and Supply. Second that motion. Leader Igliozzi moves to dispense with the reading of item number four and pass the item on a voice vote and refer back to the Board of Contract and Supply. That's second by Whip Ryan. Is there discussion? Council Missouri. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, this, uh, this contract would add a year to the error mark contract at a cost of roughly $17 million. The impetus for it is that uh, Aramark is offering to invest $1.5 million in some needed uh, deferred maintenance. Um, the, uh, it's only because of that that the committee approved it. Uh, this is an example of a, a contractor with a long relationship, and uh, we need competition. In that way, it's similar to first student. Um, the, uh, uh, their contract in 2015 um, was approved with a long relationship, and it was in that contract that they took, that they added in uh, an excuse so they wouldn't be responsible for strikes. Uh, unfortunately, the Finance Committee approved that when it was re reviewed by the Finance Committee. Uh, we will be looking at future contracts very carefully and my hope is that we'll have uh, better competition for these uh, large projects. But in the meantime, there's a million and a half dollars of urgent work, including uh, roofs that are leaky, leaking 
that present a health hazard that require this to be passed at this time. Thank you, Councilman Zuri. Is there additional discussion? All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? The ayes have it. The motion carries. Leader Igliotzi. Mr. President, if, those, if there's no more business before this honorable body, make a motion to adjourn. Leader Igliotzi moves to adjourn. That's second by Whip Ryan. All those in favor? Aye. All of those opposed? This meeting is adjourned. Aye.